Right, so we are very privileged to be here at Morningside Clinic this morning talking to pediatrician Dr. Britta McLaren. So Dr. Britta, um, a lot of my parents are very nervous around jaundice. So they know it's very common, they know that the babies go yellow, and they know something about having to be put in the light. But what is jaundice? Sure. So jaundice is, as you say, very common. And the reason why it's common is because um, to a certain degree, jaundice is actually normal. It's a normal part of baby metabolism. And what happens is when, uh, when babies are born, they have a different type of blood to, to, um, to adults in a way. And that blood gets broken down quite quickly, um, which puts a heavy load on the liver to deal with the byproducts of that blood breakdown metabolism. Up until the baby is born, the mom is doing that work for the baby via the placenta. But after birth, the baby needs to take over that function on, on its own. Um, and sometimes it can be a bit slow um, to deal with all of those byproducts. Um, the byproduct in particular is called bilirubin. Um, and that in itself is actually yellow. And that's what makes the baby's skin and eyes go yellow. Go yellow. Mm. OK, so then how do you just see it? Or do you test for it? Are they blood tests? Are they what? Like, how do the parents know that the baby's got so you do see it. You can see yellowing of the skin and the eyes. Um, but to be sure uh, that, there, that there is in fact jaundice um, and to, to decide how to treat the jaundice, you do do testing. Okay. So there is what we call a billy gun, which is a non-invasive way of testing. It's basically just a scanner that nice. can scan through the skin um, and detect the level of jaundice. But the most accurate way would be to confirm that with a blood test, depending on what the results are. Uh, okay, that's nice. And then um, so that's non-invasive for the parents, which is really nice, but then a lot of the parents get one confused, and this is the question they always ask me, is they either told their baby's got physiological jaundice, mm. breastfeeding jaundice, or breast milk jaundice. Mm. Is there a difference between mm. those? So there is a difference. Physiological jaundice is what I described. Okay. Um, um, it's, it's a normal process in the baby's body that can sometimes just become exaggerated. Um, and the jaundice then goes from a, a, a level that's normal and acceptable to a level that's too high and could be dangerous and then requires treatment. Breast milk jaundice, um, is, the cause of it is, is unknown actually, but it's suspected to be some substance that's actually present in breast milk that slows down the breakdown of that bilirubin okay. and then makes the and then pro causes jaundice in the baby. Okay. This type of jaundice is usually very mild and doesn't actually need treatment. Um, and then breastfeeding jaundice is when uh, breastfeeding contributes to the development of jaundice because it hasn't been well established. Okay. So uh, babies need to be fed and they need to be fed adequately. And this adequate intake of milk helps the baby to deal with the met metabolism of those pr um, products from the red blood cell breakdown. So if you're talking about breast milk jaundice, some of the moms are telling me that the doctors say that this can last anything, you know, for an extended period. Mm. And where I've always thought of it as a sort of short condition. Yes. And then you can just yeah, elaborate so on that. Breast, breast milk jaundice, because it's caused by something inherent in the breast milk, while you're breastfeeding, the, you know, this factor will be at play. And while the baby's younger, usually up until three months, it's a significant enough factor to actually cause some mild yellowing of the baby's skin. Um, it's a very mild form of jaundice. It doesn't have any consequences or um, effects and doesn't need any treatment. And certainly, um, breastfeeding shouldn't be interrupted for it either. So, um, yes, it can be there, usually up until around three months. You might uh, notice that baby's slightly yellow, but it's nothing to worry about and nothing that needs treatment. Okay, and then the difference then, I mean, obviously clear differences there. Is the difference, is there a difference in the treatment of the babies or diagnosing the different ones? Is it more like an academic so you know, or do we treat all the babies the same if they have the jaundice? You do. The, the principles of treatment remain the same, okay. essentially. But, um, and, and what's more important really is how bad the jaundice is, and that determines which type of treatment um, the baby may or may not need, rather than what's the underlying cause the of cause the jaundice. Of and often it's a combination. Those three entities often overlap, and there might be elements of all three of them, or one or two of them at play in any one baby that has jaundice. Okay. So a lot of the parents, some are being treated at home, and some are being treated in the hospital. Mm. 
is there a guidance or a protocol or whatever to know which babies are better treated at home and which babies are better off being treated in the hospital? Yes, so there's different things that come into play and each situation would be um, assessed individually. But essentially the most important factor is the severity of the jaundice. If the jaundice is very severe and the baby is at risk of consequences of that, then those cases are best treated in hospital where the baby can be monitored closely um, and the priority of treatment is that the jaundice comes down quickly and that can best be achieved in hospital. In less severe cases, treating at home would definitely be best because establishing good feeding is a priority in, in, in treating and managing jaundice and this is best done at home um, where mum's comfortable and in her own space and breastfeeding can, um, can be supported. Okay, so if feeding is part of the treatment, this is where I think the confusion comes in with a lot of moms. Is they're saying they're hearing the word that the breastfeeding is causing the jaundice, but then they don't really want to stop breastfeeding. But then the the natural reaction would be, should I then rather put my baby on, you know, a substitute milk? Yes, yeah. I, I don't know if there's a treatment around it or something you know, along those lines. So I think it's it's important to emphasise that. Breastfeeding doesn't cause jaundice. It's yeah. inadequate breastfeeding that okay. causes and contributes to jaundice. That's the important jaundice. thing that they're not hearing because yeah. I, I know a lot of my parents just hear breastfeeding causes jaundice yes. and, yeah. and then they want to stop. And so it's important to to feed the baby and um, a good getting good breastfeeding support, working closely together with a lactation consultant is definitely very important in establishing good breastfeeding which is part of the treatment of jaundice. Sometimes it may be necessary if there has been, if breastfeeding's got off to a poor start and yeah. mum's milk supply is not well established, the baby is not good at extracting the milk from the breast, it may be necessary for a short period of time to suffer in order to help um, feed the baby enough to treat the jaundice. But um, in the long run, breastfeeding itself is not an issue. It's not contraindicated. Um, it just needs to be well established. Okay. Okay, that's great. And then are there any long-term consequences for the babies with jaundice? So jaundice is, it can be serious and it can be severe. And that's why we, we manage it. I did say initially that jaundice is, is normal um, and it's part of the normal baby metabolism but when this process gets out of control and becomes extremely exaggerated and severe jaundice um, that Billy Rubin that the baby is trying to get rid of can actually cross into the blood and cause brain damage okay. and that's why there's a bit of a fuss and a hype about jaundice and people okay. are concerned about it. It's quite rare and if you're on the lookout for jaundice and you um, informed about it and it's managed early enough we, we hardly see these cases anymore okay. um, and with the effective treatment that is available mm -hmm. we also we also are able to treat it early and effectively. Um, so it is a very rare consequence, but that is the big danger and the big concern. Okay. And then a lot of moms are being told to put the baby in the sun. Mm. Is that a real treatment or is that a myth? <laughs> it is actually a real treatment. It does help. So the, it's the blue spectrum of light that... Um, that is important in the management of jaundice. And that's a particular wavelength. And in, in sunlight, you have all spectrums of light yeah. and all wavelengths. So that does include the blue spectrum. I'm always cautious to tell moms to put babies in the sun yeah, because of the damage. Crisps. <laughs> yeah, and the damage to the ozone layer, we just don't have that mm. same you know, safety that we had before. Um, so 10 minutes a day maximum before 10 a.m. Yeah. or after about 4 p.m. is probably safe and it, it does help a little bit. Um, but it won't treat jaundice. Yeah. So once jaundice is established, then you, you need proper yeah, treatment, treatment for it. Okay, right, and then we, Mike and I are really focused on this whole kangaroo baby care, baby wearing, because I mean we firmly believe in it. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that the moms can marry the two in terms of because a lot of them say lying under the lights, not swaddled, and I think that freaks a lot of the moms yes, out, yeah. where they want to be holding the babies. Yeah. Is there any way that the moms can get a little bit of the best of both? Yeah. So, just to touch on the actual treatment of jaundice a bit, yeah, um, as <laughs> well. Um, so jaundice, you need to. It, it's like I said, the blue, the blue light is is the actual treatment of the of the baby, and it is important for baby to lie unexposed, um, uncovered, so fully exposed under that light for as long as possible uh, in order to actually achieve the treatment. Okay. And um, 
this can be achieved with um, with uh, with baby wearing and um, kangaroo care as well. So you've got two options. The, the best option or the easiest option would be to ask your healthcare provider if they can provide you with a fiber optic blanket. Okay. Um, and that is, it's, it's essentially a pad or a small blanket that's embedded with um, fiber optic um, lighting that emits this blue light that is the treatment. And you can actually place that directly on the baby's skin while you're doing KMC um, wear, baby wearing or, or skin to skin. Okay. If you don't have this available, um, you can you can angle the lighting, um, the blue lights. You get a, a, a bed of lighting. Essentially, okay. it's like a, a panel of lights, um, and usually they are. You can tilt them. So while you're breastfeeding, um, take the baby's clothes off and it's achieve skin to skin contact while you're breastfeeding angle the lights at the same time so the baby is still um, getting the treatment it's important that the treat the lights are about 30 centimeters away from okay. the baby so you do need to be quite close to the light um, but you can do that while you're doing KMC and skin to skin as long as the baby's skin is exposed again you could um, you could have the lights um, angled onto the baby okay and then uh, and this sounds like a really stupid again but I get asked a lot do we need to turn the babies at does it matter if they only get the lights on their back or on their stomach? Because I have a lot of people say to me, do I need to rotisserie them, you know, like a chicken? <laughs> So the, I think I think it is important to turn them. Um, you don't need to rotisserie them, but uh, you know, if they've been on their tummy for a couple of hours, turn them over and yeah. um, because it works through the skin yeah. um, and it actually metabolizes the bilirubin that is sitting, you know, in the, in this close to the skin surface. So doing hours and hours on the same surface while never exposing to the baby may limit the treatment slightly. Alright, oh, perfect. And then just lastly, is there anything the parents can do? Like, do they need to feed extra? Do they need to? Is there anything from their side? Mm that they need to do to improve it or shorten the treatment period or anything that they can do? I think the, uh, the, two, the two main things that they can do is make sure that the baby does get exposed to the blue light for as much time as possible. So while we don't want to compromise breastfeeding or bonding with the mom, as we discussed earlier, there are ways to achieve that while still um, receiving treatment. Okay. Um, and secondly, to establish good breastfeeding. Um, the baby needs to be feeding and feeding well um, because that, it, that will help the baby's body to metabolize that bilirubin better. Yeah. Mm. Okay, good. Well, that's perfect. So if there's just a last message, what do you tell your parents like when they're going home? From, from a jaundice <laughs> from admission? From a jaundice or admission or something because I, I mean this really worries the parents. Mm. Like what can, what, is there anything you tell them to say, you know, your baby will be fine? Yeah, or the good thing about jaundice, and this is often what I say, parents are very worried about it recurring. Mm. Um, but often um, it's a problem in the first five to seven days of life. And if it is the common type of jaundice, which is what we've discussed today, it shouldn't reoccur. Once it's over, it's, it's, it's over if it's been managed properly. So I, I usually say to them, this is done, we've treated this, it's over, and you, don't, you can focus on you know, other parts of, of your baby and enjoy him or her. So that's really what I, you know, it's, it's, it's nice okay. in that respect and that you don't have to keep on, on worrying about it yeah. usually. So we know how breastfeeding is, um, you know, how it becomes about, but what is the actual treatment for jaundice? Okay, so the treatment for jaundice is, is, uh, is blue light. Um, it's this particular wavelength of light in the blue spectrum that is, um, that actually breaks down through the baby's skin, breaks down that, um, that bilirubin that is causing the jaundice. So um, the babies lie under a blue light um, or they get a fiber optic blanket that they can either lie on or be wrapped in um, to treat and, and that helps to treat the jaundice. It's a very nice, safe, effective and non-invasive way of treating. Yeah. Stunning. And then Mike and I really focused on kangaroo mother care and baby wearing. Is there a way that these parents can actually marry the two? So, you know, what they don't like is that this baby's under the blue lights, not swaddled, mm. you know, and they're not actually holding their baby. Yes. Is there a way that they, these two can be, you know, married or how much time do they need mm. under the blue lights? So they, there's definitely, um, definitely opportunity to um, still keep the baby swaddled and doing KMC. So you have two options. 
Ask your healthcare provider if you can have one of the fiber optic blankets um, or pads. And it's a small pad that's embedded um, with little blue lights and it can actually be in contact with the baby's skin. Um, and if you have one of those, then you can easily do KMC baby wearing skin to skin contact and have the, have the billy blankets wrapped over the baby while okay. you're doing that. Um, the second option, if you don't have that available, is um, you get a panel of blue lights. It's important that it's around 30 centimeters um, from the baby's skin, okay. um, but you can breastfeed and do KMC um, with the baby undressed and um, actually angle those lights um, so that while you're sitting with the baby, the lighting is about 30 centimeters away from you and you're still achieving phototherapy while you are um, doing KMC or breastfeeding. I think it is also important to emphasize that on that note, quick treatment um, is best as well. So if the doctor does say a baby needs to be admitted and treated, um, let the treatment happen quickly and effectively yeah. so that you can get back to KMCing um, within a day or two yeah. rather than ineffective treatment that is going to go on for a week yeah. um, and interfere that, with that process. Oh,